score. That's Eddie Payton awaiting the kickoff from Eddie Murray. They get 20 on that play. First and 10 at the 29. Wolfo hangs on to the ball, just barely gets to the 30. No running room at all. Anthony Carter is the guy that Carolina is very concerned about as we take a look at the first down pass. He runs straight down the field. They're giving him plenty of cushion because they know what a threat he is deep. Then Anthony just cuts it outside, comes back toward the ball, makes the good catch, inbounds. Michigan makes the big play on the first down with Anthony Carter getting a big reception. Second and eight, Michigan from their 30. Wolfo cuts back, finds a little opening, maybe the 34-yard line. Tackled by Bill Ellis, number 80. About, well, an even first quarter. South Carolina completing a pass for 16 yards. Michigan, no completions. Yards rushing, about the same. Totals, just the difference in that one pass completion as both teams moved the ball pretty well. Michigan with a great threat at the one-yard line after the fumble, but did not score. Third and four. The throw for Mitchell, 2-5. Michigan was forced to punt, so we move ahead to action later in the quarter. At the Michigan 34, first down, South Carolina. To the air again, Harper. Got his man, Gillespie. Out of bounds, body pushed him out, but it's at the 21, and that's another first down. I think maybe a little too much cushion on the play by Marion Body. It's a straight drop back. They run a tight end underneath to pull the linebacker out from underneath the coverage and then run the wide receiver out there. You can see Body coming up, but he's about a step and a half late as the catch is made. Michigan had one good chance in the first quarter, getting to the one-yard line before a couple of fumbles stalled their drive. Carolina on the move now. First down at the Michigan 21. Pitch back to Rogers. Good tackle by Mel Owens. He still got a couple of yards, but Mel Owens and Tony Kelsey combined to knock Rogers off his feet. Mel Owens is having a great day this afternoon. He's already had Rogers one on one a couple of times and brought him down, and that in itself is a great day. Owens was last week's champion of the week for Michigan against Notre Dame, breaking up the pass. Good football player, one of the steady linebackers in Michigan's defense. Second and seven, but it's at the 19-yard line of Michigan. Same kind of motion, and this time they come left. Rodgers cuts back beautifully. Rolls past a couple of defenders, and finally is hauled down by Marion Body. Inside the 10, first down Carolina at the Michigan 9. Talk about a guy that's this big, 6'2", 220 pounds, stops on a dime. You think he's a fullback. Watch this. Stops right here. Tackle overruns him. That's Cohen. And then he just runs, shows his quickness and shows his elusiveness as he gives a limp leg to one guy and rolls to get about three more. First and goal at the nine. You start watching him and thinking Franco Harris and Earl Campbell and people like that. That's a fact. Option play. Johnny Wright knocked off his feet. No game. Gergash and Owens are there, and Diggs came up quickly to help seal that play. Wasn't in on the final hit, but made it happen earlier. Second down and still nine yards to go. The Michigan defense coming up with a big play there. But you gotta watch his quarterback throw too. Horace Smith splits out to the right. And of course, tight end Willie Scott has been his target. He is the throw on second and nine. Scott knocks the roll. Jeff Cohen and Marion Body were back, and that was almost six. I think the ball should have been caught. I think the ball should have been caught by Larry, uh, Willie Scott. This is the same pattern they've run all game long. As a matter of fact, I only think they've run one, one pattern. They run the wide receiver out underneath, and the tight end will go a little bit deeper and make an outcut. This time he's in the corner of the end zone. Now the ball is thrown maybe a little bit behind him, but Willie Scott's good enough receiver. He should have caught this. Hits him right in the hand. Tried to close on it a little too early. Third down and nine from the nine. Go again. Same play. Over 
strong. Once again, Larry, the same pass pattern. Uh, just two men, re two receivers out. Both of them go out about, one goes seven, one goes about 12, and they run out cut. That time, Michigan is trying to hold them up on the line of scrimmage. So far, it's worked. Eddie Leppard is the kicker for South Carolina. He is three for three in field goal attempts this year. This one will be from the 16-yard line or 26 yards in length, and it is easily good enough as South Carolina jumps out to a 3-0 lead midway through the second quarter. Sixteen plays going 74 yards. Finally at the nine, they started trying to throw it instead of giving it to George Rogers. And Carolina gets a field goal. John Tanner forward to kick off to Stan Edwards and Anthony Carter. And Anthony won't have a chance on that one as it's right through the back of the end zone and out. First and ten Michigan at their own 20-yard line. and Wolfolk in the backfield. Carter and Mitchell split out right and left. Wolfolk has to dodge a linebacker in the backfield and is hauled down by Ed Baxley when he gets maybe two yards. Lawrence Ricks coming into the ball game, Larry, to replace Butch Wolfolk as Bo again shuttles in his tailback. First appearance for Ricks this afternoon as Butch Wolfo started, played well until fumbling that pitch at the two yard line. Second and eight, Wangler. Jumps one, complete to Norm Betts. Betts has it near the 30 yard line. That should be a first down. Betts is second on the team in receiving. Four catches for 31 yards and a touchdown. And this is Michigan's patent pattern with the tight end. He comes across the field underneath the linebackers. Wangler throws that pass about as well as anybody. And Betts just takes a dive over the tackle over the 30 for the first down. First and 10. Pitches back to Rick. And he gets five, maybe six yards before he is hauled down. Bill Ellis. And Ed Baxley over to stop Lawrence Ricks. And Ricks is signaling that there's something wrong equipment-wise, so Wolfo comes back in. Ricks gets a hole, first of all. Here comes Ingram across and blocking through the hole. And there's also Big Ed Moransky, number 72. So Michigan got some good blocks for Lawrence Ricks as he picks up seven. Second down and three. Ingram and Wolfo now the combination behind Wangler. Wolfolk, deep left. There's your first down. Out of bounds about the 48 or 9 yard line. Mark Bridges pushed Wolfolk out of bounds, but it's first down Michigan. Been a nice to have two backs like Ricks and Wolfolk. You can go with either of them. Both of them have great quickness. Both of them have good power. Here's the guard pull. He gets through the hole. Butch just outruns this guy that comes through on the, on the inside. That's number 59, Walt Cater. And then Butch just turns on the speed. He is a Big Ten sprint champion, and he gets to the corner, turns it upfield, and lowers the left shoulder, inside shoulder, and runs through a tackle to get a couple more. At the 48-yard line in Michigan, first and 10. Okay, that's up this time. Linebacker got through on top of him. That is Ed Baxley. He did a great job. Baxley from St. Petersburg, Florida, 6'2", two, two and a quarter senior. He Baxley. reads this well and does a great job. Well, that's just, you know, you play with your basic reckless abandon. There were two people down in front of him blocking, and he just ran right over the top of him, took a leap over the tackles, and managed to get a hand on Wolfolk, and he was the guy that stopped him. Makes it second and nine. Langler to throw. No, a little reverse. Grant to the corner. Langler to block. But Carter.
Carter is spun out of bounds by Phil Ellis as they read that very well. They have seen that one and were ready for it. Wangler out in front looking to block a little bit for Anthony, but I'll tell you, the problem was is that they just had too many people out there. They didn't fool anybody. One of the keys to the backside end on a play is make sure there is no reverse coming before you release and go in pursuit. This time, Anthony looks out there, and he's looking for a hole, but they just feather it out. Phil Ellis is the guy who comes on over, beats the block from Wangler, and throws him out of bounds. Third down and still nine yards to go. Ingram and Wolfo. Wangler to throw. Hits it. Out of bounds, first down. He caught it right at the 32-yard line and stepped out. Beautiful execution. Perlow was there, but there was not much you could do against as well thrown as that ball was. Not only was the ball well thrown, but there was great protection for John Wangler. They came with the blitz. Butch Wolfolk picked up the blitzing linebacker. Wangler had the time. Mitchell ran a good cut. The ball thrown right on the sideline. He just stepped on uh, inbounds and took one step out of bounds. Beautifully executed play. At the South Carolina 32, it is first and 10 Michigan. Wolfolk. Behind the big block, just inside the 35-yard line. Pat Bowen made the tackle. Kurt Becker leading that play, doing a good job of clearing people out of the way for Butch Wolfolk. The key to the Kurt Becker block, watch 65. He will sustain it. Wolfolk takes the ball. Now watch Becker. He stays with this guy. This is the linebacker. He'll stay with him, keep him tied up. Butch sees the hole open up inside. He cuts it back in there for good yardage. Credit Becker with a great block. Credit Wolfolk with good decision. Second down and one, gain of nine on that play. Wangler looking for all of it. Murder at the five-yard line. Come down by Harry Skipper, but make it the six. It'll be first down Michigan at the South Carolina six. Once again, great protection. 124 Wolfolk, he'll pick up the blitzer. Now he's got a lot of time. Anthony is tough to cover one on one, and that's what they've got. Ball a little bit underthrown, but Anthony comes back to catch it. Michigan inside the South Carolina 10. Of course, they have been this deep before in the first quarter, and a couple of fumbles kept them from putting points on the board. We'll see what happens this time on a first down and goal from the six. Wolfolk and Wangler collide, and they lose a yard. Maybe two. Second eight. We talked. We talked about it the last time they were down close. You cannot make these critical mistakes down close. Looks like Bush and John don't know which side that he's going to go. If Wolfolk could have managed to get outside of Hal Henderson there, he could have probably got to the corner of the end zone. But the play was doomed when they ran into each other. Ricks replaces Wolfolk in the backfield, giving Langler the play on this second and nine. He lost three on that play. Looking over the middle. Oh, touchdown. Anthony Carter with a little cut out to the corner, and he was there. He's double covered on this play, and again, Wangler gets good protection, but he throws the ball beautifully over the linebacker and in front of the deep back, Anthony, one of the best athletes on Michigan's team, go up in between the two to make the catch. Ali Haji Sheik with his first conversion attempt of the afternoon. Gilbert spots it. It's good. And with 2.54 left to play in the half, Michigan goes in front, 7-3 over South Carolina. Sheik teeing it up to kick it off, and he'll be sending it back to Terry Bishop, Horace Smith, and or Percy Reeves. Those are the three deep men with Horace Smith in the middle for South Carolina. This kick into the wind a little bit. Bishop has it. Up over the 20-yard line before he is rolled down. South Carolina was unable to move the football, so let's pick up the action later in the quarter. First down Michigan at their own 32. John Wangler has quarterback 
all the way so far. Lawrence Wick. Furlow and Henderson combined to bring him down, but it's up near the 50 at the 48-yard line. Michigan in their hurry-up offense as we take a look at the play. Ricks gets the hole right up the middle. Good blocking, and Larry just breaks it in there. First down, they've snapped it again. Wangler passing. Complete. The run back. Out of bounds, and that is about nine, maybe ten yards. Same pattern coming across the middle. The tight end starts to the field side of the play. Just runs underneath the linebackers and across the field. That time Wangler showed you the strength of his arm as he was being hauled down when he got that one off. Dunaway checks into the huddle with a play. That was a first and down. A minute, first and ten now. What was that? <laughs> first and down, yeah. Minute and four left in the half. Michigan in South Carolina territory at the 42. Wangler for Carter. The place went out of bounds. Anthony Carter can catch the ball anywhere, even out of bounds. That time the defender had well covered, and Anthony runs a straight fly pattern. They figure with a minute and four left and first down, you know, it doesn't hurt. He runs a straight fly down the, down the sideline. Ball is thrown over the outside shoulder where it should be thrown. But watch Anthony. The defender has the ball, and he puts a hand right up there, and Anthony just catches it like it's no problem. He's just an outstanding little receiver. Second and ten. Still at the 42 of Carolina. They go back with Rick through the middle. Linebacker fought that block off, however, and stacked the play up. <laughs> 51 seconds till halftime for John Wangler. He has Ingram and Ricks behind him. Mitchell and Carter are split out. Looks to Mitchell. Tried to jump at the bets. Instead, it's incomplete. They get fourth down and six yards to go. Into the wind. This would be an awfully long field goal. 46 seconds left till halftime. It appears Michigan will take one more shot at the first down, or maybe all of it. Craig Dunaway has the answer, and he takes it into the huddle to John Wangler, replacing Norm Betts at tight end. Carter comes out wide right, Mitchell split left. Wangler pitch. Larry Ricks says they look for the first down. Ricks gets it down the sideline, out of bounds. 27 yard line. Lawrence Ricks with excellent speed gets the first down and stops the clock with 39 seconds left in the half. That's just a great run, Larry. Rick leads the team in rushing with 21 carries and 152 yards into this game. And here it's all on his own. He just uses his speed to get outside and wants this agility to tiptoe down inside the sideline and get the first down and importantly, steps out of bounds to stop the clock with 39 seconds left. First and 10 for Wangler and the Michigan Wolverines. They lead seven to three. Looking for Mitchell. No chance to get that one away. Hal Henderson leading the rush of a strong South Carolina defensive line. Second and 16 now at the Carolina 33-yard line. Fake is to Ricks as Wangler looks. Down by the 11-yard line. Mitchell is dropped by Furlow. But that is down for a first down. Alan Mitchell, an all-Catholic League performer in high school from Detroit Catholic Central, makes a great pattern here. He sees the defenders and he just kind of tippy toes into the middle of three people. They have a first down but they have only 18 seconds to do something with it. Quick pass, sideline. At the three. Anthony almost turned it back inside for the cut, 
and then spun outside when they started to make the tackle. This shows you the ability of this young athlete. You don't want to go inside on the play because you want the clock to stop. But Anthony takes an inside go and then heads right to the sideline, thinking he might have been able to sneak it into the corner. He saw the other guy come over and he gets out of bounds. Not only is he an incredible good athlete, but he also is smart. He knows what's happening over here. He says, I'm running out of bounds. Second and one at the three for Michigan. Ricks goes out to the left. Carter goes in motion. Wangler looking for Carter. Got him. Touchdown. Nobody covering Anthony Carter. He went in motion and fools the South Carolina defender. First time they've seen the formation for South Carolina. Not a trick play, but what they do is send Ricks over there to the left side in a slot position. Anthony comes across the formation to give it trip receivers on one side. There is nobody to cover Anthony in the flat. Wangler just lays it out there, and Anthony's in all alone. Touchdown, Michigan. Sheik will attempt the extra point. It is up and good, and Michigan leads 14 to 3 with only five seconds left in the half. Anthony Carter catches his second touchdown of the game, and they put everybody inside, lured the defense inside with two other receivers out to the left. Carter came in for, uh, motion across the formation. There was nobody there to cover. As Larry said to me, he's tough enough to cover one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one. -on -one. Boy, when you get him none-on-one, -on -one, forget it. Just a game of catch, and they do that in practice all the time. 11 touchdown catches for Anthony Carter in his brief career here at Michigan which already puts him third on the all-time list for touchdown pass reception. And remember, he's not even into a season and a half yet. Boy, this guy could be something. Sheik will see if he can waste five seconds with a ground ball, as a matter of fact. Bouncing around past everyone. It is covered by Perlo. Down around the five-yard line, right on the five. No, Horace Smith, rather. And Three of the five seconds ticked off the clock. There you have it. Ten plays to go 68 yards. And it's Carter to Wangler again. That has accounted for both Michigan touchdowns. A oh, Wangler to Carter. <laughs> that passed backwards. Yeah, but Anthony <laughs> can throw it. <laughs> Dude, That's right. He did last year in the Gator Bowl. But he didn't. One play left in the half. And they'll be conservative, I imagine, from their own five-yard line. First and ten Carolina. Harper just... Sneaks ahead for a couple of yards, which will show up on the stat sheet, but mean very little else. The gun ends the first half with Michigan leading South Carolina 14 to 3. Statistically, Jim, the, the figure is showing just about what we expected. Carolina can run the ball, but Michigan can pass on Carolina. Absolutely. I think the key to the whole thing is the fact that Michigan defensively has really kept Carolina from rushing too much. George Rogers has some good yardage, but as you can see, uh, Carolina only has 90 yards rushing. Now, George Rogers usually has that in the first half by himself. Michigan, the key, though, passing. They've gone with 114 yards. Wangler has been outstanding, going 9 of 12. And uh, first down's even. Uh, the turnover's even at 1. Michigan's turnover on the goal line probably might have been a 21-3 ball game had they held on to the football and gotten in the first time. Passing the difference in the two touchdowns, too, as Carter hit Wangler. Wangler hit Carter twice. <laughs> You're going to figure that out before we get done today. You can see Anthony on the first touchdown makes a great pattern. He shields the defender from uh, him in back of him, and Wangler puts it in there between the front man and the back man for a touchdown on the first one. The second one is just a great call. They run Anthony across the formation in motion, and there are two receivers out there to that side already, and Anthony runs into the flat, and he's all alone. And at this point, Michigan's up 14-3, to three, and there's only five seconds left of the first half, which means going into the second half, now the Wolverines, I think, will come up with great momentum. And we're ready to go into the second half now. Both teams on the field. Anthony Carter, the deep man to receive for Michigan, standing behind Stan Edwards. Michigan's effort to hide him. John Tanner, the kickoff specialist for South Carolina, moves forward. The wind is at Tanner's back, and he hits a line drive that skips at the 10-yard line, bounces through the end zone. It'll be Michigan first and 10 at their own 20. After a turnover, we pick up the action later in the quarter with South Carolina in possession. First and 10 now at the Michigan 46-yard line. Harper to throw. 
Jackson. Knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. And a penalty flag is down. Johnny Wright finally tackled Tony Jackson, but not before the junior from Cleveland had given Michigan a chance. Ooh. Penalty on the play, Larry. will be holding defensively against the Wolverines. And what happened was Andy Canavino playing one backer had coverage on George Rogers. When he came to the line of scrimmage, Andy tackled him. Just flat out dead tackled him right in front of the referee. And that will ruin a good interception. Canavino here now you'll see the play coming he sees Rogers coming out he says I'm gonna stop him he can't get by me now that is a classic case of defensive holding the result a first down for Carolina at the Michigan 41 the Gamecocks keep this drive going and come at you he is hit and driven back by Calvin Rose the freshman, or oh, Thompson, Robert Thompson, 99. What a big play by Thompson. That is about the first time anyone has handled Rodgers one-on-one. -on -one. I'll tell you, Robert Thompson must have come up there and said, uh-oh, I'm all alone, I got this big guy. But I'll tell you what, he sticks the head right on the numbers, holds on for dear life, and makes a solo tackle on George Rodgers. And learn that doesn't happen often. Second down and 11 for Carolina. At the Michigan 42. Harper on the screen to Rogers, and he fell at the 45. Upset George Rogers. He thought he could have had some running room. And he would have had because Michigan was in the blitz and there was nobody out there. The reason that uh, the pass was thrown poorly and Rogers couldn't catch it was because the blitz was coming, but it hit him in the hands and he stumbles and goes down. Here's the blitz from Canavino coming in. He's picked up, but that leaves the end free, and he forced the pass early, and then Rodgers just couldn't hold on, and Canavino is right there. Third down and 14. Obviously a throwing situation for Carolina. They want this drive to keep going. They go deep. Complete. There's the first down as they hit Horace Smith. Although he was surrounded by Michigan defenders and finally tackled by Body. Horace Smith got open for the first down at the Michigan 22-yard line. Marion Body, who's covering on the outside, actually slips on the turf. You can see him behind. He slips and has just gotten up, but Smith has already made the cut and is in the secondary for the first down. Big, big third down conversion for Carolina. 2.33 left in the third quarter. Michigan 14, Carolina 3. Harper fumbles the exchange, and there goes a down and a couple of yards. Critical mistakes when you're down close kill you, and that's one of those things that happened. Michigan has fumbled twice on the goal line when they were driving to get in, and now Carolina has caught the fumbleitis from the Wolverines. Second down and 12 as the ball goes back to the 24 of Michigan. The wind at Carolina's back in this quarter. Harper going to use it to throw. Complete. Body takes his man out of bounds. Horace Smith to 10-yard line. But Horace, the fine flanker, junior from Thomasville, Georgia, is getting open. Caught him in the blitz once again as Michigan came with about seven people up front. That left one-on-one -on -one coverage. Smith runs a very quick out pattern. Marion Body is on the coverage, but he's wide open. Smith is a freshman, caught an 80-yard touchdown pass to beat Ole Miss. That was last year. He's in his sophomore season, and he's a good one. First and goal at the nine. They were here before, tried to throw the ball. This time it's George Rogers down at two. Oh, he is a load when he gets down near the goal line, huh? He just comes at you. Second and goal from the two yard line. Car Carolina missed a couple of passes last time and wound up kicking a field goal. This time they said, we're coming at you with our ace. And boy, does he run. He is always leaning forward. The senior from Duluth, Georgia, George Rogers, gets the call at the two and gets the touchdown. South Carolina narrows the gap. When you're that close and you've got George Rogers, it's awfully difficult to stop him. 
Surprised they didn't do it last time from the nine-yard line. His Very surprised. Sixth touchdown of the year. Simple play. They just block it straight ahead. And George Rogers steps over a couple people and powers in. Eddie Leppard with a field goal to his credit. He's 16 for 16 on conversion. Make it 17 for 17. And the score with a minute 21 left in the third quarter. Michigan 14, South Carolina 10. Excellent scoring drive for Carolina. 88 yards, 15 plays. As John Tanner puts a foot to it and sends one deep through the end zone. No chance for Carter to run it back. Michigan takes over first and 10 at their own 20. And Anthony Carter has not been able to get the ball either on a punt or a kickoff to return the football. Of course, he's so super when he gets that ball and he gets it on a punt or a kickoff. Last week against Notre Dame almost broke one for the distance. Wangler, Ingram, and Ricks, the eye formation for Michigan. As they start a drive, and Ingram gets the call, and a little gap, splitting it up to the 28-yard line before Perlote can stop him. Gerald Ingram with a gain of eight yards. Stanley Edwards fumbled last time he carried. North Carolina turned that turnover into a touchdown to make it 14-10. Now, Gerald Ingram is the fullback, and he is taking care of business at fullback position. I guess both figures. We want both hands on the football, and Ingram will do it for me. That's South Carolina. Second and two. Ingram again. No place to go this time. Emmanuel Weaver jumped through. Andrew Province, number 70, was there. But the middle guard shed his block and had his arms wrapped around Ingram before he could get to the line of scrimmage. Third and a yard. Before today, Ingram had just carried three times. He has 11 yards. He'll get a little more work, I think, here in the second half. Norm Betts comes in, replacing Alan Mitchell. Anthony Carter splits wide out to the right. Everyone else is in fight on the third and one. Ingram bangs into the line, gets it very near the 30-yard line. I think I would say he has the first down, but I imagine they'll probably measure South Carolina players jumping up and down saying they've got a little more to go. And time runs out on the clock, ending the third quarter of this game with the score, Michigan 14 and South Carolina 10. The decision is fourth down. Michigan did not make it on the Gerald Ingram carry, and so they open the fourth quarter with Don Bracken in the punt on fourth down. The ball just short of the 30-yard line, which is what they needed to get to to make a first down. Bracken stands in his own 15. Snap is short to Stanley Edwards, trying to sweep, but he did not get the first down. Michigan trying to run on fourth down, and Stanley Edwards is trapped, and Carolina takes over at the Michigan 29. Gambling Michigan team is foiled as Carolina quickly got to the outside and they have a big break after having pulled it within four points just moments ago. First down, Gamecocks, Michigan 29. Harper, Wright, and Rogers in a line. Rogers to the short side of the field. Gets an opening out of bounds at the 22. Big punt is a big gamble to take because you give George Rogers a chance to get the ball inside the 30-yard line in your own 30, and I'll tell you what, this guy can move. You see there, makes about three good moves as he turns the corner and picks up eight. It's the 21-yard line, second and two, Carolina. Rogers through the middle, met and nailed at the 20-yard line. That'll be short of the first down. Robert Thompson, one of the hitters. Turgovac 
also there. But Robert Thompson, the man who stopped him from getting to the first down marker, third and one. Michigan's defense sorely tested at this point when the fake punt didn't work. Horace Smith split wide right on a third and one. Everyone looking for Rodgers. Instead, it's Johnny Wright for the first down to the Michigan 16-yard line. Pull back Johnny Wright that time. Carolina threatening as the fourth quarter begins. 13-41 left to play in the game. It's 14-10 Michigan. Tim Gillespie, it's the flanker black, back to the right. First down, pitch to Rodgers, hurdles the pile and goes inside the 15. To the Michigan 12. Got four, second and six, second and seven. Got to figure they're going to come at you with a big guy from now on. I don't think there's any question. Second down call for Carolina. Rogers again. Inside the pen. Canovino is there. Kelsey is there. But Rogers got plenty of yards. Third down and two. One thing you notice in the plays that they're running, George Rogers really has never had a clean shot at him. He has always been running through tackles and running uh, through hands and arms. 121 yards already today for George Rogers as he comes out of the ball game for a well-deserved rest. That's 14 in games in a row, over 100 yards rushing for that guy. Right and Percy Reeves now the back. Option play, Percy Reeves. He bangs down to the Michigan one-yard line. Body and Reeves there to make the tackle. But it is at the Michigan one, and it is first down Carolina. Good As call. Good call on the goal line for Carolina, and that they've been running between the tackles with Rodgers, and then they come back with the option. Michigan looking for things that, uh, up front, and they uh, try to attack the perimeter and are successful. And goal at the one, and Reeves is not in the lineup. It is right, or Rogers not in the lineup. It is right and Reeves. Celeste in motion. Right gets the call. The opening and a touchdown. Carolina goes back in front of Michigan. 16 14 at this point. Johnny Wright, the fullback from Fort Myers, Florida, gets a good opening. Good blocking. He's got a head of steam and carries in. Good blocking at the point of attack. They had caved in Michigan on that left tackle side. Got good a hole. Reeves just powered over. Eddie Leppard with 17 in a row. Hits his 18th consecutive conversion. It's South Carolina 17, Michigan 14 with 11.49 to play in the fourth quarter. John Tanner readies to kick for Carolina, and the wind, which had been strong, blowing in Tanner's face, has slowed down considerably. Line drive kick fielded by Anthony Carter near the 10-yard line. Anthony walks to a 34-yard line where he is caught and brought back to earth by 27 Chuck Finney. <laughs> After an exchange of punts, we pick up the action later in the quarter. First down for John Wangler as he has Ricks and Ingram in the eye behind him. Normally, I'd like to run it out of here before you start throwing, and Ingram plows forward to maybe the nine-yard line. That would be a gain of four. That's not much of an opening. Carolina giving ground very grudgingly. Second down and six. Anthony Carter replaced by Alan Mitchell.
second down from the nine. Larry Ricks. Up back behind. Pick his way behind the wall of blockers, and it's the pursuit from the backside that gets him. But then Ricks just takes those big legs and pulls forward for a first down. At the 12, first down. Wangler fell down, but he got it to Ricks. And he gets maybe a yard. Got their feet tangled up. And Wangler fell down, but Ricks was all right. For Ed Baxley and Chuck Allen stood him up. Second and nine. That was the attempt at the draw play that was so successful last week against Notre Dame. Dunaway replaces Betts and carries in the play. Mitchell comes out left. Anthony Carter splits right on this second and nine play. Wangler, plenty of time to throw. Intercepted at the 35-yard line intended for Alan Mitchell, but intercepted by Mark Bridges, number 20, a senior from Heat Springs, South Carolina. A big turnover with 5.39 to play. Carolina has another chance to score. I think the primary receiver was the tight end. He looked for the tight end underneath, didn't find him, so he went deep to Mitchell running the out. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him, and Bridges came up inside to make the good interception. First down, Carolina at the Michigan 31-yard line. Harper. Straight ahead on the give, short yardage. The Michigan defenders stack it up. Five and a half minutes to play in the game. When you're leading by three and you've got the ball in this kind of position, you can start to feel pretty comfortable. And Bo Schemmeckler's got to be sitting there saying, boy, I wish they didn't have George Rogers because he can control the ball all by himself for five minutes. Rodgers in the tailback position behind fullback Johnny Wright. Gary Harper sends Gillespie in motion. Rodgers on the pick. Run down on the outside by Robert Thompson. Kurgovac also chasing. Thompson did most of the damage, but still Rodgers got three. He looking a little tired. He has carried the ball a lot today, and he has taken some shots. I think Robert Thompson has probably hit him harder than anybody has all season. And he is a workhorse, but what a great back he is. Third down and seven at the Michigan 29-yard line. Carolina on the pass interception. Looking for more. Harper. Complete at the nine. Great catch and a ball that was underthrown. Horace Smith came back and picked it off the turf. You got it, Larry. A great catch and a ball that was underthrown. They're running an out pattern. Same pass they ran earlier in the game. The tight end underneath. The wide receiver a little deeper on the out cut. And he underthrows it. And Horace Smith just picks it off the ground on a shoestring. North Carolina, South Carolina rather now, really in business. They know what they have going now at the nine-yard line. They've dedicated themselves to at least a split in the Southern Cal-Michigan games. And at this point, they have it. Straight ahead, Rogers, Wright fighting to the five-yard line. Johnny Wright. He's starting to show some of the running we did not see from him in the first half. Now, when you've got George Rogers in your backfield, you got to figure uh, he's going to get it a lot. And Johnny Wright, who was a good runner, but he just happens to be in the same backfield with George Rogers. Rogers has 36 carries already for 143 yards. 317 left to play in the game. 17-14 South Carolina. They have it second down. And goal at the Michigan six-yard line. Michigan defense with a difficult pass. Johnny Wright tries to get outside. Robert Thompson wraps him up with help from Gerald Diggs. Just got it over the five. Third down, four and a half. George Rogers back into the lineup, replacing Percy Reeves. Five will get you ten. George Rogers gets the football. 
But the clock keeps ticking away. That's the, the other plus Carolina has going on this drive. 2.33 showing. Third down and four. It's the throw over the middle, intercepted. And down by Robert Thompson, who thought about running at 100 yards, but decided the clock and the 20 would be just fine. Thank you. Now, can you figure that? Robert Thompson, first of all, makes a great play. He's had a great game this afternoon, but let's check the strategy. We'll look at the play. It's a quick pass over the middle of tight end Thompson, who's from his outside linebacker spot, has coverage on him, drops right in front, and, and makes the interception. But you've got George Rogers in the ball game. You lead by three against Michigan in their home ballpark. And you just, you figure they're going to give him the football, and if they don't get the touch, they can get a field goal, which puts them up by seven and forces Michigan to go the distance. Robert Thompson gets the big interception. First down, Michigan at the 20. 220 left. Throw is complete to Norm. They dropped it. Norm Betts at the 40, had it for a moment, I think, and dropped it. You can't ask John Wangler to throw a better pass. It was right on the cut. And as soon as Betts turned around, the ball was in the hand. And Norm just dropped it. There was a 20-yard gain, wiped out. 2.15 remaining to play in the game. South Carolina 17, Michigan 14. There are going to be no easy games for the Wolverines this year. Wangler on second down. Just tips it away, but over the head of Ricks as he was under extreme pressure from Carolina's Chuck Allen. A close call against Northwestern. A heartbreaking last-second loss against Notre Dame. And here, trailing Carolina by three, Michigan has only two minutes and ten seconds to work with. And it's third and ten from their own 20. Wangler and Carter called upon for another miracle rescue. They combine for a completion to the 39-yard line, 19 yards on the play, and a first down. You talk miracle, just mention the name Anthony Carter. Oh, is he something. Anthony Carter runs a post. He's being doubled, and he gets away from the man at the line and runs right underneath. Wingler puts it on the money. Anthony catches it after it hits him in the face mask and then gets a couple on his own before Finney brings him down. First and 10 now from the Michigan 39-yard line. Give this to Lawrence Ricks. Lawrence Ricks into Carolina territory at their 46. Penalty flag is down. Looked to me like the Gamecocks had jumped offside. But one of the officials pointing at Michigan. And that will nullify a first down run by Lawrence Ricks. He had gained about 12 with a minute 43 left. Michigan was starting to look like they were in pretty good shape. Now they'll go back five yards to their own 39 and start again with first and 15. Three in a row, Larry. Can you believe it? Glad I got some voice for this one. Wangler splits Carter right. Alan Mitchell left. And that didn't fool enough people. With the 44-yard line, he got the five back. Gary Berger and Chuck Allen tackled him. Berger, an extra defensive back, brought in because Carolina knows Michigan has to throw with a minute 20 left, and they trail by three. Second and 10 at the Michigan 39-yard line. Wangler over the middle, incomplete. Knocked away. Anthony Carter almost had a chance at it on the second bounce, but it falls incomplete. It'll be third and 10. Carter, not the intended receiver. That was thrown to the tight end. Skipped through his hands. Punched the Carolina defender. 
That's when Anthony had a look at it, but it was away off to his left. Don't want to call anything here, but the draw play has been successful in these two tens the last couple of weeks. Well, they need 10 to keep this drive going with a minute 14 left on the clock. They fake it, and Wangler throws it over the middle. That'll be good for a first down. Alan Mitchell with another big catch at the Carolina 45. Offense, no huddle, a minute five as the clock ticks again. First down, Wangler. Time, throws it out of bounds, 31-yard line. Boy, it was tough there as the defender reached in and batted that ball away from Fred Rockington. People on the Michigan sidelines a little hot down there. They thought there might have been interference on the play. And from up here, we're a long ways away. We'll go along with you. But it looked like it. It stops the clock with 58 seconds to play. Second and 10. Carolina 45-yard line. Michigan trails by three. There's the draw. Inside the Carolina 30. Pat Bowen and Robert Perlow stop Lawrence Ricks. But not before he gets a gain of 12, 13 yards. Again, the hurry up offense. The clock begins to move now at 50 seconds, 49. Wangler over the middle to Norm Betts, and Betts is down at 12 yard line, 17 yard line. That'll be a first down. Gary Berger stopped him. Again, no huddle. Michigan with 43 seconds left, moving quickly downfield. Wangler throws one out of bounds to stop the clock, accomplishing what he wanted. 38 seconds to play. It'll be second and 10 at the Carolina 17. Whoa, we got another one. Oh. Holy cow, Larry, this is great. Isn't it three outstanding football games here and three straight weeks coverage of Michigan football. Michigan running what they call their quick offense. It's green and red. Now, when they run a red play, they'll just call it up, line it up, and then Wangler throws it out of bounds. They conserve two timeouts, and uh, they get the ball uh, second down and 10, but they don't need to down because they're in their hurry up and pass offense. Mitchell splits wide right. Carter in motion. Also now flanks out to the right. Ricks and Ingram are the back, but Wangler is throwing. Incomplete intended for Alan Mitchell at the nine. Ed Baxley on the coverage. 34 seconds left on the clock. South Carolina 17, Michigan 14. Both these teams coming off a loss last week. Carolina to Southern Cal 23-13. Michigan to Notre Dame 29-27. Anthony Carter, top of your screen. Wide to the right, Alan Mitchell split left. Wangler in the pocket. Hits Carter at the five. First down, Michigan. Pat Bowen stops Carter. But with 28 seconds to go, Michigan is at the South Carolina five-yard line. John Wangler, Anthony Carter. You can't throw the ball any better than that post pattern, and you can't catch it. It is right on the break, and it is a bullet, and Anthony takes a big shot and holds on. What a great little receiver, and I'll tell you, Wangler cannot put the ball in any better spot. On the break, he's moving fast. Oh, wow, what a football game. What a quarterback, what a receiver in this series. Five, 28 seconds left for Michigan. Ricks in motion. The same kind of a play that they scored on just before the half as Carter goes in motion. The corner, 
thrown away beautifully by Mark Bridges, who remembered what happened to him earlier. Trying to sneak that one in on him, running the other way this time. And uh, South Carolina diagnosed it, and Anthony had good coverage in the corner. 24 seconds left. Michigan, second down and goal from the sixth. Here's Anthony in motion. He cuts it right out into the flat, but a defender's been following him. Bridges, and he comes over and knocks it away. Good defensive play. Fred Brockington replaces Alan Mitchell. Carter split right. Brockington split left. Same kind of formation as Ricks goes in the slot. They give instead to Ingram. Two-yard gain, perhaps to the three. 19 seconds left on the clock. Third down from the Carolina three. Michigan trailing by three points. John Wanger wants to check on another play. That time they ran the same formation. Brought Anthony across, thought they might lure South Carolina into thinking it was the same pattern. They might break Ingham through the middle, but it didn't work. And South Carolina got tough. that started at the Michigan 20 following the interception by Robert Thompson has pulled down to the South Carolina three and with 19 seconds left it is third down and goal. Wangler third at the 10 yard line. Gary Berger and Hal Henderson came barreling in and the quick offense is still going. Michigan going with his fourth down from the 10 yard line. No huddle. Wangler to throw. Over the middle for Carter. Oh, and out of the end zone. Incomplete. Time runs out. The ball game is over. And South Carolina has upset the University of Michigan 17-14. Be sure to join us next week as the California Golden Bears travel to Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines. Once again, today's final score, South Carolina 17, Michigan 14. The executive producer of On TV Sports is Rocky Flinterman. Today's game was produced by Chuck Wasselbuck. Our assistant director has been Jim Dewey. Our associate producer, John Tuey. Our stage manager, Michael Smith. This has been a sports presentation of National Subscription Television.